Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Unbound's story mode. Yes, we're back in the story mode after a year and a half. Now, why are we doing that? Mainly, two thoughts here. There is a very large Steam sale, the Steam Spring Sale, where all Need for Speed products were like 90% off. So you could buy Need for Speed Unbound for only $7. Yes, it was 90% off. So with that, because it was a very cheap price, a lot of new players have picked this up for the very first time. I'm mainly talking about my friends and my brothers. Hi guys, hope you're watching this video. So I was going to take this time to kind of introduce the story mode to the new players, but also give my overall thoughts of the story mode now that I actually came back and finished it. But this is my burner account, so I'm doing it over again so I can really show you guys what the story mode is like. First and foremost, the one thing that I wanted to discuss is I do enjoy the story. It's a very unique story for Need for Speed. Talking about, you know, a couple of kids that grew up in the foster system, bounced around quite a bit, and finally found a good home right else rides. And I find it's a little bit more of a relatable story than all the other Need for Speed stories that we've had for so many years. Or was Payback was taking down a Mafia boss. You know, Need for Speed Heat was taking down freaking uh, police department. So Need for Speed The Run was taking down another Mafia boss. This is a little bit more small scale where it's like, hey, you know, you're racing as, you know, a small town, small time racer moving up through the ranks to see if you can eventually, you know, fight off an old arch rival who also is in the foster system type thing, who just happened to go behind your back. Like, that's... That's a little bit more reasonable. So, that's that's fine. It doesn't make the story any less cringy, though. And I was going to find... I was going to say this. Whenever you're trying to just drive, you're constantly bombarded with, like, speech. Constantly. Of course, it's part of the story building... And there's a lot of important stuff in the prologue. But what I would recommend doing is if you go down to audio and you scroll down to speech volume, back out and go to accessibility and turn off subtitles, you can actually think while you're racing. <laughs> I, I will say that it makes cutscenes a little bit interesting not having audio or whatever but the nice thing about cutscenes too is you're not gonna lose much by skipping them i hate to say it so like if you just skip through it it'll give you like a text box of like what's going on throughout said cutscene so then you can just kind of keep on going with the story now the interesting thing is is when you turn off all that speech I found it rather interesting that whenever there is speech playing of like some of the main characters, even though that the subtitles were off, the audio would fade down and then fade back up as if it was the audio was coming out to like show focus to, you know, the main character speaking like it normally would. So I don't know if that was a bug that I was experiencing or if that was actually hardwired into the game. I don't know. That's just kind of like a weird thing that I experienced, but regardless. My thoughts on the map is since Need for Speed Heat was based in Miami, it was based off of the east coast of Florida. So you had the big great ocean on the right side of the map and then progressively went from like cityscape into great plains into more rocky hills and mountains. And... I found it interesting that that was the exact same topography that Criterion used for the very next game. I know Ghost Games worked on Heat and then Criterion, you know, started out for their own brand new game. It was just interesting that they decided with the same layout. I think this map is about the same size, but there are a couple of new things that they had where they had an actual test track, like race track. And then they had, like, down over here, they had a giant ski slope. I mean, they had so many new things over here that uh, Heat definitely didn't have. Like, I also really liked the city here because I feel like the city was a little bit larger in Heat. But 
The cool thing about this is these multi-levels here, which I'll be honest, makes for driving and navigating completely ridiculous because you can't tell if you need to be a level up or a level down. But I think it's kind of neat just because it's based off of Chicago and Chicago's got kind of the multi-level system and then it's got like the subway system over it. It's pretty cool. So I wanted to take a brief moment to talk about the story mode racer AI. Uh, you can kind of tell how it is. It's much like Forza where most of them suck and then you've got one that just drives off into the distance. When you have a car that is fairly competitive and not stock, then they're pretty easy, pretty pushovery. Uh, some in the later races, they do get a little bit more competitive. So if you like, you don't crash, you'll probably be a couple of seconds ahead. But if you do crash, you're going to spend most of the race trying to catch back up to them. And this is a perfect segue into the cop AI. Kind of the same thing where a lot of people have talked about. That's a huge discussion point online where it's like, you know, is cop AI good? Is it bad? A lot of people are screaming about how bad it is, how like heats cops or more aggressive, more on your ass. I mean, this here just shows how easy I got away from them by doing a couple of turns. And to be honest, most this is a B class level car and this is like heat level one. So when you get into like heat level five, they're not as much of a pushover. They're definitely more about trying to actually <laughs> arrest you. And when you've got the helicopters, the helicopters are nuts, man. They're crazy because you're just trying to like drive out into the middle of nowhere. And the cop, well, the helicopter is still going to be on you. It's like, this is completely unreasonable. And speaking of cop AI, I'll show you. So we've got a couple of these cops coming around and you've got in like your most stealth espionage like games like Metal Gear Solid, you've got kind of these little viewers in front of them. I used to play this game like I was playing Metal Gear Solid where it's like I would actively try to go over here to avoid them. So then there are some nights where on the way to an event. There's like 20 cops. So I'd be trying to avoid every single one of them. I'd get really agitated about that. I learned about this just recently and I feel really dumb. So that's why I'm elaborating about this in this video. If you are fast enough, if you're just driving. So I'll just say spotting, spotting, spotting. And then as you drive away, you're fine. I cannot tell you how many hours I wasted just avoiding cops like that. It's like, are you kidding me? So yes, if you just drive past them normally, you would think that like they would come after you a little bit more aggressively where they'd spot you and be like, oh my God, like here's their guy, the go, go, go. But like only if you only if you crash out in front of them do they actually do that. One of the other things I learned recently that I felt pretty dumb about as well. So you've got this weekend structure where you start off, you know, in the day and then you go to the night and then you go day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night. I like that. I like how they brought that over from Need for Speed Heat. I enjoy there are some parts where I miss the day-night cycle in-game, but just how the setup works, or you have to be more worried about cops at night because of the heat you gain through the day and how the heat stays with you throughout the day is cool. I also enjoy how you can get cops during the day as well. It didn't make sense in heat where you didn't get cops, so the fact that they do, you can't get them in-day now makes a lot more sense and I actually quite enjoy that. The one thing that I didn't enjoy is you have four of these weeks and that's the entire campaign. So this gets really monotonous really quickly. You're just doing day night, day night, day night and it's just more and more races, more and more races, more and more races. And there's not a whole lot of ways to be able to really break it up. So let's say I don't have the buy-in money for the qualifier right now. Let's just say I did. You can 
Just go into your next day. And when you get in your next day, just find the first cop you see. Start a cop chase, and then you just sit here. So all you watching are going, why the hell did you do that? That's the reason why. Because you only lose cash for that that you make during that time frame. So if you make any money during night and you get arrested during night, well, bummer. I made all the money in day. I'm now in a night session. I just need to skip through. I have the money for the buy-in. Now I can get to the day where a new set of events, where a new set of cash is there. Let's say it was I was on Thursday. Now I can go to Friday that has that really big payout. That's kind of a no-brainer. One of the other side effects of that system, though, is that you have to be a little bit careful about the heat that you gain in the day and this is something that I've really struggled with especially early on is if you just get all sorts of money during the day and you ramp up to like heat level 3 by the end of it any event you do in night you're going to have a cop chase and you're going to be just absolutely crazy to get out of each and every one of them and you're going to destroy your car because you don't have any durability upgrades or any repair kits or anything like that so it gets to be kind of a problem so being able to just kind of reset it knowing that you don't have to deal with that you got to list the pros and the cons where it's like you know what events you have during the day you don't know what events you're going to have at night though so I try to be pretty low-key during the day. I'll only do like an event or two, only get it up to about one and a half heat, maybe two at the most. Because then at that point, I can see what's going on at night. And then be able to kind of go from there, see if there are any heat level races, which honestly, I don't like doing heat level races again, because as soon as you're done with the race, then you have heat level three, four, or five that you have to escape. And when you have a stock car or a pretty not upgraded car, those pursuits are difficult. They really are. And one of the main differences from Need for Speed Heat is that kind of the car class system. Need for Speed Heat used to have, if your car was at performance level number, whatever it is, you can go any, any performance under it and still be okay. Just as long as you're close to it, you're fine. This game, however, I enjoy the segmented classes where you have to have a B-class car, an A-class car, A+, plus, S, S+, plus, because it forces you to have more than one car that you can drive. And then when you've got, when you go into online and you've got like gauntlets and then you've got the uh, meetup, not like the link-ups, and then you have the drift events, my Lakeshore Online car garage it's just i've probably got 20 cars in it i use most of them and the story mode you don't use that many cars that's for sure you use five or six of them for sure and then with the um and then with like some of the cars that you get for free by getting them winning them in events like you'll have easily 10 of them so for those who have completed the story mode long ago, I know this video necessarily wasn't for you guys. However, I will say this, is that giving this game, you know, playing the story mode quite heavily in the beginning and then migrating to playing only online and then coming back to the story mode gave me a few different thoughts. One being, I love the voice actors. I think they did a great job. This writing in the story the big picture of the story is nice. It's got a great theme. It's really relatable. Like, they have characters with personalities that are very relatable. I like all of that. Just the constant, incessant speaking and bombarding you with, like, pointless conversations about, like, Hey, I just went to, like, Taco Bell and got a taco. Again, it's kind of relatable, but when, like, you're going through the weeks and you're just like, okay, just shut up. <laughs> just, just. So I think the programmers put too much emphasis on the 
conversations because they think it's a way of story building and world building. And I think it is important, but they just needed to tone it down a little bit. So the world itself, like I said, is very similar to Heats. I enjoy it, though. I enjoy this kind of landscape, this layout. It's not too bad. I think it worked well in Heat, and I think it works well here. It's. I'm hoping that whatever the next Need for Speed game is, that they really have a map that changes it up, because if it's any what's similar to this format, I'm going to be really pissed. Car AI, Cop AI, it's a Need for Speed game. It's fine. The handling model is fine. Graphics are great. So honestly, revisiting the story, what spoke to me really was the couple of things that Unbound did differently from he was really exploring the car class system, really exploring the different types of events that you can do in day and versus night. I love the takeovers. That was a really nice touch. And all in all, what I found the most was how mid it was. <laughs> it wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. So for those who were who are getting into Need for Speed Unbound for the first time, it's what you would expect out of a racing game story mode. It's there. It's it's not anything profound. You'll get a couple of laughs here or there. The voice actors really did a good job given what you know the writing that they had. But yeah, I don't know. That's kind of my overall thoughts. It's a story mode. And that's all I got. So if you guys enjoyed the story mode, leave a comment down below. I want to get your guys' thoughts on if you enjoyed it or didn't like it. If you told me years ago that I would enjoy playing the online more than the story in a Need for Speed game, I would have been flabbergasted because that's all I've been doing is I play Need for Speed games for the single player. So that just means either how not great the story was in Unbound, but I think it's more of how amazing the multiplayer is in Unbound. So again, let me get let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you agree with some of these opinions, if you disagree with some of these opinions, again, I'm really interested to hear what you all have to say. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye.